Ollie, it's the end of that long unbeaten away record, but was it a particularly yeah. troubling way to end it? Obviously, in, in, uh, when you look at the game after, the four goals we concede are all very poor. And uh, when you concede four goals and perform like we did, we don't deserve to uh, continue that run. So uh, definitely performance was uh, uh, very below par and not good enough. It was a bold team selection initially. Do you feel it just didn't pay off? You know, we started uh, getting a very, very good goal with uh, with Mason, and we're we're uh, knocking on the door to get a, get another one. But then uh, sloppy play, and we concede that first uh, first goal, which was um, disappointing. Second half, uh, it's still end to end, and but they created the more chances and. Two goals at set pieces, disappointing, and of course, ten seconds after you've uh, you've uh, equalised, that shouldn't happen uh, at all. To be honest, you know, um, we've been we've been having those kind of games for for a long time, and we haven't find the like the problem. We need to find us the problem to to concede goals, easy goals, say stupid goals. When we know those games, when you play uh, in this pitch, the fans gonna push, um, gonna put pressure on us and everything. So we need to be, we need to be more mature. I think we need to play with more experience, arrogance in a good term, meaning that we there, we have to take the ball and play our, fo our football. But now you have to find what's what's the key of this uh, this change and this game that we lose because I think we deserve to lose today. Yeah, just what the crowd thought of it, how much they enjoyed it. Did you enjoy it as well? Yeah, yeah. I love watching the team today. I said to him before the beforehand that I, I studied the, the, our last game against Crystal Palace as if I was going, just coming into the job. So really focused and dispassionate in terms of, right, what am I seeing? And I then laid that out to the players that it's, it's not what I want to see. It's not what we've been. And, and in fairness, this group have been brilliant for me. So, we had, but we need to turn the screw and we need to keep that ambition and keep proving the point. Today, we proved the point that we can be a very good side when we play with that mentality and that hunger. And, uh, and to beat a team with that quality, it was, uh, it was a great victory for us. We deserve to win. I think um, we show good character in, in, in getting back into the game. Um, I think David De Gea was man of the match for the amount of chances we created. He made some incredible saves, so uh, I think that speaks to how we approach the game. You know, that was more like us. It was the uh, the formation that suited us a lot. We were very aggressive in our press and our counter press, trying to force mistakes higher up the pitch. These kind of things were were things that we were we were looking to do. So um, hopefully now that that's uh, that's us getting back to to where we need to be. Well, Rogers and Schmeichel said the same thing there, didn't they? That the high pressing, the passion, the aggression that is Leicester's identity, and that was back today. Yeah, I thought it was their best performance of the season. I thought they were absolutely fantastic, and they were aggressive in their press, and everyone was on the same page, and that's why they had the success today in doing what they did. Jamie Vardy did it, Inacho did it, Tielemans did it, put them under pressure high up the park. Everyone knows what they're, they're doing, and this is how they get... Their goal. I mean, it's a brilliant piece of skill, but it all comes from all doing the same thing. If one goes, another one goes. They win the ball high up the pitch, then all of a sudden they're into that defence uh, and getting efforts at, at goal. And this was a, was a constant in the middle of the park. Uh, Tielemans, who I thought was absolutely superb, controlled the midfield. Very unlucky again, well, that's a brilliant save from De Gea. Perez comes on, he knows exactly what he's doing. He goes straight into the, uh, into the, the same setup and on the, uh, in the understanding. It comes to the right hand side. Pereira's unlucky, but again, it, it all comes from winning that, uh, winning that ball. Same thing again. And this is the last minute from a 34-year-old. They're winning 3-2. Look at what he's doing. He's not prepared to give that up, doesn't give them a moment's peace, and that's why they were superb and as a very, very best and deserve to win that game today. If you take the same subject, pressing, yeah. the contrast is huge. The contrast was massive. There was a lack of a plan. There was no structure, uh, particularly without the ball from Manchester United. We see everyone for Leicester on the same page. Now, have a look at the difference from Manchester United. It's slow. Don't know whether to press high. One 
uh, pass is, is, is cut up, cuts the, the Man United defence open. And as I said, it happened again. Look, Bruno, does he want to go? Not really. It's half-hearted. It doesn't know whether to sit off. Leicester are a very good team. And they, did, they were superb today. But Man United made it far easier than it should have been for them because, as I said, they didn't really know what they were, were doing without the, uh, without the ball. Look at the four forwards there, four forward players. I mean, it is far too easy. They're looking around, thinking, what can we do? One pass straight through the middle of them into Tielemans, touch, turn, another pass, straight through the midfield again, no protection. That was Man United's problem last season, they didn't invest in that position, <laughs> same thing again. Look, it's, it, it is very, very easy into players, no players closing uh, Leicester players down, you can run with the ball, you can take a touch, you can get your head up and you can get straight into the, uh, into the back four again. And something similar again, they lose it. Head up, look up, pass. No one prepared to go in and, and really press and, and take control from the front. And you, you can't do that in the, uh, in, in the Premier League. They will always score goals, Man United, because of the brilliance they have uh, going forward. But you, you cannot press if you haven't got that aggression. If you don't know what to do, then you've got to sit back and be compacted as, as a team. The team that I saw today, Man United, didn't know whether to go, didn't know whether to sit. When they did go, it was half-hearted, not as a team. So following on from that then, right, they're, they are at the start of a really tough run of fixtures. And with each game, would it be fair to, share, to say then, Micah, that this is a team that looks increasingly without a plan either in possession or out of possession? Yeah, they, they don't really have a, a, an identity. I, I think with Man United of the past, you always know they had wingers um, getting strikers into the box, midfielders running to the box also. But now it just looks like they're trying to keep everybody happy. If you look at Man United squad... Players in, happy. Yeah, it, yeah players. Yeah. Individually, the quality players. You've seen what, what they've got. Ronaldo, Pogba, Fernandez. These players should be shining. Sancho coming, Rashford coming and score, scored a goal today. Martial scored a, a goal a couple of weeks. They've got Lingard an array uh, of talent, but they don't know what they're doing with the talent. Now, Oli has to make some harsh decisions now, whether he leaves one of his big guns out, puts one of them to the bench, and just goes back to basics and finds a plan how to get this team playing together. So they need to show more maturity, play with more experience, and they deserve to lose, according to Paul Pogba. Strong words there, Maka. Yeah, to talk about maturity and experience, I mean, the one thing you would say about Manchester United team is it's got that in, abund you know, in abundance. Mm. Um, I think the fact that they've come, it's the game again, a difficult game away from home after an international break. Some of the players looked as if they're still there. You know, the first goal he equalised was a wonderful goal from Tielemans, and you don't want to take anything away. But it was an awful mistake by Harry Maguire. You don't associate him making mistakes like that. He's arguably, well, last year, Manchester United's best player. And then it just it just rolled from there. Then the second half was poor. Every goal, as the manager said, was a mistake. They let Once they got the equaliser, they allowed them back to go back up the other field and score 3-2. And it must have been incredibly frustrating for the manager and the staff because it was a, um, it was a really poor second-half performance from United. What was missing, Andy? I just think for United, when I watch them when they're not at their best, and they weren't at their best today, is what have they got to drop back on onto when it's not quite happening? When it's not firing up front? Where are we? As a, do we defend very deep and we're good at that and we ask those boys in midfield to, to keep their shape and, we, and all of a sudden you look at me and think, wow, they're going to be hard to break down. A bit like Chelsea have been, a bit like what we see of Liverpool. Mm. Um, I don't know what United are. I, I, I think when they're playing very well, they're so easy on the eye. They're so good to watch. They've got so many good players. But when it's not quite happening, as it didn't today, is then I look and I think, I, I don't believe they've got the substance in their team that the better teams have got. Yeah. I really don't. Yeah. So you say you don't know what United are. Does Ole still struggle, you think, do you think, to know his starting eleven? Does he even know who his best team are? Well, you wouldn't think so before today's game, because their away records has been phenomenal. Yeah. So you'd think, no problem, he's picked an attacking-minded team. You know, people have been crying out to get Sancho on the pitch and Greenwood and Ronaldo and Fernandes, and really that team with Pogba and Matic should be good enough, but individual errors just cost them, really did. Maguire for the first, certainly Wamba Saka for the third, an awful bit of defending. And 
sometimes you just cannot legislate for that. You think no. your team's good enough. You've gone 2-2. Two -two. Rashford's come on. First kick of the game, bang, 2-2. Two -two. The United fans are up. You're on the front foot. 30 seconds later, you're 3-2 down again. Do you know, do you know Michael, when, when, when we see a Chelsea team, if a Chelsea go in front, any fan watching this or any, any, any supporter of football will go, it's going to be hard yeah, for that team yeah. now to break a Thomas Tuchel team yes. down now they've gone in front. If, you, if Jurgen Klopp gets his team in front, phew, it's going to be tough to deny Liverpool now with that front three and the way those boys work. With United, I don't ever quite know no. what They're I'm never going to, going to get, uh, score today and keep it a 1-0, no. are they? They're always going to give up chances. But who do you blame then or put the onus on? Is it, is it well, the manager? That's it the has manager. to be that's the manager. Now, it, it, the buck stops with him, I'm afraid. That's his call. He has to... Has he developed that yet, Ollie? I don't think so. I don't think he... Now, look, that takes time, years, and it takes winning things, I think, to develop that confidence, probably as a coach, to become someone good enough to turn around and start really bossing big players around and tell him exactly yeah. where they, what he wants from them. I just think United are a bit like, if we go out there and do what we do, and if we play well, we win the game. But it ain't that easy. I mean, it's not as easy. It takes time, years, and it takes winning things. I think to develop that confidence probably as a coach to become someone good enough to turn around and start really bossing big players around and tell him exactly yeah. where they, what he wants from them. I just think United are a bit like, if we go out there and do what we do and if we play well, we win the game. But it ain't that easy. I mean, they've, easy their unbeaten it? run has been phenomenal. So who do, you, who do you give credit to? Is it the players or the manager? The players. They and then as soon as they lose a game, it's the manager's <laughs> fault. Yeah. yeah. You know, and the thing is, the interesting thing for the, the neutrals who are watching United is, is yes, they've bought Ronaldo and they bought Sancho for a lot, a lot of money, certainly Sancho. Throw him into the mix with a Fernandes and a Pogba and a Varane and a Maguire, who's a, you know, who has been England captain. That's when it's you look at the manager and go, can he can he handle yeah. this group of players and start pointing fingers and shouting at them and telling them off when they go wrong? And I think that's the that is the big question for me. I don't know whether he's got the the aura, the power to say to Ronaldo, you shut up and sit down, you're awful. Pogba, you get off, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Like you know, Pep, Jürgen, Thomas Tuchel can do. Yeah. And unless you're in the dressing room, and I'm not in that Manchester United dressing room, I don't know whether Michael Carrick, Mick Phelan, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has got the power to do that to the, that group of players yet. Well, you mentioned Rashford coming on, of course, scoring the goal to equalise. And yeah. then... Jamie Vardy, with a moment of brilliance, took so, the score to 3-2. So you've just scored, you've just got back to 2-2. Two -two. So you work at the ball. Now, why is Aaron Wan-Bissaka diving in there? Scott McTominay, that's Aosi Perez. Not quick, get tight to him. Don't back off and let him back you into the box. And then the two centre-halves drop off Vardy and he smashes it in the back of the net. I mean, that's a lot of amateurish stuff. Yeah, it is, yeah. And that was only a minute after If that was under 16 ball. level, you'd go crazy at them. These yeah. are the best players on the planet. Juan Bissaka diving in on Castagna when he's a defender is mad. McTominay allowing Iosi Perez to run into the penalty area without tackling him is mad. And then Harry Maguire dropping off away from Vardy is mad. You can't legislate for that. But that, and this is what we say about, this is kind of what United are seeing. You know, United, they're only, what are they, only four or five points off the, off the top of the, off the top spot. So it's not a crisis, but I never feel like they're that far away from a crisis mm. either. <laughs> you know, I feel like there's one lurking around the, the corner and it, and it's, and if Ollie's not careful, it's going to start to develop into a, into a problem for him, I think. Yeah, and I mean, we have to look ahead to their fixtures Oof, and they well, next do crack, have isn't it? some big games. Yep, that is. I mean, they play Atalanta, obviously, midweek in the Champions League and wow. then it's Liverpool, Macca. Mm. I, mean, uh, wow. I mean, we know what they... You know all about that fixture. It's, you know, a heated one, but yeah. for them to play Liverpool after what Liverpool achieved today, I mean, it's going to be a tough ask. Oh, it's going to be incredibly tough. We know how big that game is anyway. Liverpool, you know, playing well. Manchester United on a defeat. You know, if anything happens in, in, in that game, then, you know, it will it will collapse in, in Old Trafford. Throw in Tottenham away and a Man City as well. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of problems ahead. They need to win, win and win. Otherwise, there'll be a lot of fans yeah. wanting a managerial change, unfortunately. I don't like it, but you, you can hear the rumblings in the area where I live, in the northwest. You can hear them chanting yeah. away, he doesn't know this, he doesn't know that. And he's an easy... 
he's an easy person to to change, isn't he? Unfortunately, yeah, because he of is. because of his reputation. You know, there, there's some really tough games there. There are some some really tough ones, and I think if that little spell, that next five games. Now, whenever his back's been against the wall, Ollie, mm. he's managed mm. to find he results. He has, mm. yeah. And they've gone on good runs, and they've they've gone wow. United are there. They are yeah. back with him. He has got them. He is. He's going to have to get that again. Isn't that a good quickly. game though? Liverpool at home. It's better than oh. Brentford at home. Yes. You know, Liverpool at home it speaks for itself. Yeah. Well, you don't have to get up for that. Liverpool nice. are going to dominate possession. You can counter attack. It's perfect for them. Yeah. yeah. Just try and get a result.